Bill, I want to go ahead and move on to uh, former President Trump now, the four charges that he is facing. What stands out to you the most? What are you making of the indictment as a whole? And what types of penalties could the president, former president, be facing right now? Um, I, I, I think he's facing 20 years in prison. Uh, not that he's going to receive 20 years, but that's the statutory maximum. Um, these are very serious charges, and I think the grand jury uh, was very careful and very detailed in its indictment, uh, spelling out uh, step by step by step, not only the illegality, but the fact that Mr. Trump knew uh, what he was saying was false, that uh, he was undermining the system of government. And the narrative, I think, is clear. You know, as a, as a businessman, as a private individual, you can see that when someone appears to lose negotiations or lose in court or lose something like that, you know, as a person, they have a right to try and get around it, you could say. But as a public official, as the president of the United States, his duty was to the system, to the process. His, his duty was to follow the rules. And what he did here, according to the indictment, was attempt to go around the rules in every way that he could. I mean, this indictment says not only that people told him, but the indictment says he told people that he knew that what that he had lost. Uh, I, I, I don't want to have a fight with the defense counsel because I'm defense counsel, <laughs> but I think this indictment does say that Mr. Trump did something wrong and knew that he was doing something wrong. And, and to your point, Bill, because you had mentioned that you do believe that Trump could be facing 20 years, that he potentially could be facing a conviction in this case. Could Trump then run for president? I mean, how how would that work? Well, I think he could run for president. The question of whether he could take office or not if he was elected is, is for other scholars. Uh, or is for scholars. Okay. I don't want to put myself in that category, but um, he could certainly run for office. There is no prohibition about someone seeking election when they're under indictment or even if they're convicted. The question is whether they're qualified, and there's always the 14th Amendment question. And um, so if Republicans choose to uh, nominate him, he's a candidate. I want to go ahead and bring up a clip from Trump's attorney and talk about strategy for a second because he's calling this indictment politics. Take a listen to this. This is politics. This indictment is about pure politics. We engage in vigorous debate in this country about politics. What we don't do is criminalize political speech. This indictment is a game changer. It's the first time that we've taken political speech and said we're going to criminalize it by the party that's in control against the party that's contesting the next election where the two individuals involved are going to be running for office. That is an incredible set of circumstances. All right, so it seems like his defense team plans to build their defense around this so-called violation of free speech. What do you make of this strategy, Bill? Well, when I'm representing somebody in a politically sensitive case, I make it a point to keep my mouth shut so that I don't get my words thrown back at me later on. I think this indictment went way out of its way to stress and point out that this was not about speech. This was not about contesting an election. It was about going around the legal channels, about finding, making backdoor deals, telephone calls, summoning elected leaders to the White House, and having them have conversations, uh, attempting to install false, knowing false electors. Uh, I don't think this, this indictment has any whiff of free speech in it. 